right, so here we are. Sequel Productions Podcast. Alright. I think it's number 11. Is it? I think so. So, uh, I'm Matthew Bonta. Patrick Reichelsberger. And here we are in the middle of making a movie. Or Street pre-production. Meets Street Meets Pavement. Uh, for those of you who don't know. Face Meets Pavement. No one's gonna... There you go, that's the title right there. <laughs> uh, uh, no one's probably ever gonna listen to this, but one day... People, one day people will. will go back and listen to the old episodes. Right. And this will be that one. Then you'll have those liars out there say, Oh, I used to listen to them all the time. I was there for episode didn't. one. Yeah. <laughs> That's all bullshit. Don't listen to them. Uh, you know, maybe they're there from episode one 20 years later or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so we're doing Street Meets Pavement. Uh, should we just go over the whole thing? Uh... Yeah, let's just go over the whole okay. thing since it hasn't been put down on podcast yet. Okay. Uh, we've told plenty of people. It's all over. The cat's the out of the bag. Yeah, cat's out of the fucking bag. Um, basically... We won't give away too many spoilers, but we're going to give you the basic layout. Yeah, so basically, uh, me, Patrick, and Greg Kleino. Uh, we were meeting every week, weekend. Every uh, Saturday. Uh, we started out with... Getting down the basic plot of the movie, I sat down and wrote 60 pages. Patrick went in and wrote another eight, and I wrote another three on top of that. And Greg's going to go in and finish up the touches. Then we got Mike Robinson writing a few pages. Yep, for some flashback scenes that you won't know about right now, but one day when the movie's out, you will. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's our last cheese movie. Um, Until we really do it. Yeah, this is our last amateur movie. Well, last yeah. amateur cheese movie. Uh, at least... At the very least, the last amateur cheese movie, uh, in hopes that the next one will be a professional. I'm thinking a million bucks, a dollar budget. <laughs> and uh, so we got the script out. Uh, we got the movie cast. We auditioned some people. We actually only auditioned two people for two parts. <laughs> uh -huh. We couldn't get any more people. They to worked audition. out perfect. Yeah, that worked out great. Oh, you know what? I was thinking. I forgot to mention this after we auditioned Sarah. Um, she read that monologue, but I wanted to put it back into the the movie because I took it out and the rewrote it. Patient Zero. Yeah, yeah. Did you re you rewrote it? Yeah, remember I said that I, I changed it and turned it into more of a conversation between the two women instead oh. of just doing a monologue. Oh, well, you I haven't seen that yet, then, huh? No, I guess not. Oh, okay. But when she read it, it actually sounded not fucking like a Matthew Bonta monologue in the movie but she, she read it well so yeah she did a good job I you know I've got the page still so we could probably do both cuts of that okay my one and then my new one and then my old one I wanted <laughs> I forgot to mention that but yeah no we auditioned and then we cast uh, we basically have the cast down uh, just a couple extra roles uh, small crackhead crackhead a couple of thugs Dude who sits at bar, young gentleman. Young gentleman. <laughs> some bar patrons. Ugh. And military dudes, Marines, which, uh, which I think are already they're, cast. They're, they're yeah. taken care of. So uh, I believe that's it is for the extra roles. Two thugs, a woman, crackhead, I think. Oh, and uh, there's some Narcotics Anonymous meeting. Oh, uh, yeah, a few people in there. We could probably just get real crackheads for those parts. <laughs> so that's that. Um, that's where we're at in the movie right now. Yeah. Uh, we got the script read through next Saturday, which will be May 18th, 2013. 1 p.m. 1 p.m. Tentative. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's going to be there. It's going to be an exciting day to hear the characters actually speak. Now, I was thinking about that. We, we only need, like, we've got eight main roles. One of them's not going to be there, which is Olivia. Mm -hmm. And her role it consists of five pages. If that. Um, so, we only really need seven people. And we've got confirmed five. So, well, it's me, you, Greg. Oh, we need Boop. Yeah, so Dakota and Sarah. Sarah is 90% going to be here. Oh, that's right. Didn't she say she couldn't? She, she, well, she graduates at 8 in the morning. That's right. But you, know, you got rehearsals and everything. But I told Greg to let her know that it's at one, but we'll probably be waiting for people to show up anyways, so get here when you can. 
Yeah. Hopefully he said that to her. Uh, I haven't talked to him much. <laughs> we can watch, watch him come back and the, the script's going to be 200 pages long. <laughs> I think he's doing that today. I think he's coming over and he's going to work on it while we're working um, on our shit. He didn't work on it. Yeah, he hasn't... Uh, he's probably been reading it yeah. and making some notes, but he'll probably go in and work on it because he doesn't have Final Draft. So oh, he'll have right. to edit that's it right. on that's here. Right. Um, and then Dakota, and I, we'll call Dakota today. You haven't talked to him at all. No, I've talked to Dakota. I told him, you know, hey, Saturday we want to do the read through. He said then he emailed his HR person oh, about yeah, getting that's that right. Saturday off. But trying to get a hold of that bitch is fucking impossible. So uh -huh. I texted him about it. He hadn't texted me back. So we'll call him today. Yeah. Uh, and get that. So we've got everybody but three. One can't make it. One's 90%. I, I, I want to say 90%. It'd be she'll hopeful probably, about yeah. that she'll probably be here. And then Dakota's probably the other 10% that he, he might be here. Yeah, well, we got to have Boop. Um, and then I also invited, like, Ty and Jeff. Jeff's back. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I saw his picture. <laughs> You're all over Facebook now. Well, I just check on it real quick. Um, so, that's that with the movie read through after the read through uh greg wants to call that pre-production uh we'll be waiting for the kickstarter and you wanna... the kickstarter ends june 1st at 3 p.m oh. so we'll be waiting for that and so on top of that we start filming <laughs> whether we have yeah. the money or not uh so on top of that we'll be uh figuring out locations costumes props and mm -hmm. schedules mm -hmm. um and we'll get everyone's number and schedule what their the schedules look like mm -hmm. on Saturday, and that's where we are with street meets pavement. It's coming along. It's coming along rather nicely. Hell yeah! All right, so now that we got that out of the way, let's move on to talk about some movies and some fun stuff. All right, what should we talk about? Well, here I wanted to throw something out at you. I want to see how good your memory is. Okay. April first, two thousand five. Tell City. me. Sin City, tell me about that day for you. Okay, well, uh, that day uh, I had my dad take me to see Sin City, first showing. Um, stayed up all night, couldn't sleep because I was so excited to see that <laughs> fucking movie. So glad it's here. I uh, finally went and saw it, and that's where I met uh, Matt Bonta and, uh, and his, his group of cronies, all dressed up like the Sin City characters. <laughs> Do you remember who was who? Uh, you were Marv. Yeah. TJ, I don't remember anybody else. TJ was Dwight. Was he? Yeah. Uh, do you remember who Greg was? I don't even, Greg was there. I don't even remember that. Um, he was the tattoo cop. <laughs> well, the funny thing is, I, I met him in the urinal. Is where I fucking... Uh, a couple of, like, Because we, we were all taking a piss, and uh, they were talking about my brother, and how come he didn't show up. And I was like, hey, that's, that's my brother. <laughs> <laughs> and we thought you were the older brother. Oh. We thought you were like a 20-year-old dude. Oh, shit. No. 20-something. Yeah. And Eric's like, no. And we went and saw Punisher, and they didn't card him, but they carded me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They didn't card me at Punisher. That's right. I remember that. Fuck. That Do you remember a... uh, what trailers they played for Sin City? Uh, I remember Domino being one of them. For sure. And they showed when they showed Mickey Rourke. Yeah. Like, Woo! <laughs> Marv. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was April first. I was just wanted. I wanted to see. You know. That movie I saw four times, and I saw it immediately after that showing. Yeah, I went back. I didn't see it immediately after, but we all got together and dressed up again and saw that night at Sparks. Oh shit. <laughs> Yeah, I just jumped into another theater and watched it again. <laughs> did your dad just leave or did Well, he, he went to work out and, and... Came back and got you? Well, it was right down the street from the theater, so I just walked up there. But, okay. Yeah. But yeah, I saw it twice. And it was fucking even better the second time around. And now we got Sin City 2 coming out? We got Sin City 2 coming out in October. I'll be in L.A. for that one. Oh, shit. That's right. My budget will be kind of tight. I don't know what kind of movies I'm going to be seeing down there. That's how I am right now. I want to go see Great Gatsby. Uh, any good reviews on that? Or? The one little article I saw, I just read the article headline, is that uh, it does justice to a good book. So, mm -hmm. uh, But I, I really want to see it because I love the book. I love the story. I just want to see it because DiCaprio is the new De Niro. 
Well, you know, it's an interesting book. You haven't read it? Mm -mm. Haven't seen like the Robert Redford movie? Mm -mm. That's more of like a just kind of like a shiny movie opposed to like, it's just like it looks good. It's very elegant, but like it doesn't really pop. Like the yeah. acting, like Robert Redford's kind of dry as Gatsby. But you know, I mean, Gatsby's kind of a dry character. Do you know what it's about? Mm -mm. I have no clue. It's about the Roaring Twenties and flappers and everything and having parties and just like... It's like the Twenties version of Less Than Zero. Oh, okay. So what happens to him in the end? Does he die? Yeah. Spoiler alert! How does he die? <laughs> um, does he drug overdose or get hit by a car? Because the whole movie looks like it takes place at one big party. Yeah, pretty much, and it's not like it's just one, it's just like it's constant parties. Mm -hmm. Gatsby's this rich guy, and uh, I want to say that the woman he's in love with, like they had something together before, like Casablanca kind of. Yeah. Um, and she's married to, who's the girl in that, uh, Carrie Mulligan? Is that her? Yeah. And she's married to uh, Joel Edgerton. You know who that is, right? Warrior. Oh, uh, he's in that? Yeah, he plays her husband. And he's like an asshole. He like beats her, I think. Oh. If he doesn't beat her, he's a very aggressive guy and he's always fucking yelling and he's cheating on her with somebody else who in turn is also married to another person. Mm -hmm. um, Tobey Maguire's in this movie too. He's yeah. kind of like the guy that's taking you through all this shit. He's like the, you know, the naive, green behind, or wet behind the ears mm -hmm. kind of guy. And he's just following Gatsby around. And, uh, you know, he's Gatsby, because he's the cousin of Carrie Mulligan's character. Oh, okay. And so Gatsby's kind of using him as the way to get to her. And it's like, oh, yeah, we're buds. Let's go do stuff. Let's go do this shit. Mm -hmm. And so he's starting to wind, uh, Gatsby winds and dines her. And uh, her husband's cheating on her with somebody else. And, like, it all comes up to this big, huge fucking conclusion where fucking I think not her husband but the husband of the woman that he's cheating on his wife with okay I think he comes and fucking shoots Gatsby because he thinks it's him that's having sex with his wife or it's it's something like that somebody gets killed a woman gets killed she gets ran over by Joel Edgerton mm -hmm. gets hit by a car and dies and I, and I think Whoever that character's husband is thinks that it was Gatsby that ran her over and killed her. Mm. And so he goes and shoots him and kills him. And then, you know, the fucked up thing, like, the less than zero is that these people just kind of go on with their lives and go back to partying, you know, uh, th these course. incidents just happen and it's just like, it's fucking life. Yeah. Well, still, I want to see it just because of DiCaprio. Right, right. I just want to see it because I love The Great Gatsby. It's like one of the greatest books ever written. Better than... In it, in context, you know, you got to think that way for every like movie, book, things like that. It's like when it came out and the impact that it's had since then. You know, it's easy to call it like one of the greatest books ever written, but like I actually do enjoy that book. Yeah. And and it is a very well written, awesome book, you know, with all the themes that it has and everything. Mm -hmm. And you know, thinking about it, it's a lot like Less Than Zero. And maybe even fucking dude Brett Easton Ellis was inspired by Gatsby to write his version of that for the eighties mm -hmm. in LA. Because I think that takes place in New York. I'm Gatsby. Not sure. I'm not sure. I don't know shit about the movie, man. Because there's like this picture of a dentist like a, a, a billboard of a dentist. I think it's like an old one and like there are eyes. Maybe it's an optometrist. <laughs> mm -hmm. And their eyes, they're just looking out. And, it, and it, it might say something on there, but it's a huge theme of the book. It's been a while since I read it. Um, and then like there's also a billboard in Less Than Zero that says disappear here. And it's just kind of like the thing of mm. losing yourself in L.A. Well, haven't just... you read Breston, Brett Easton Ellis' biography? Don't, does he say what he was inspired by or what his influence I haven't read his biography. I've just yeah. read, like, Less Than Zero, Rules of Attraction, American Psycho, Informers, Glamorama. Glamorama. 
uh, the sequel to Less Than Zero. That's Glamorama? No, no, that's Imperial Bedrooms. That's a fucked up book. It's a sequel? Yeah. Who's in it? Isn't it just the guy and the girl? No, no, everybody. Because Robert Downey Jr. doesn't really die. No, and that's how the book opens. The book opens and all the characters are like, oh, they made a movie about us. And he's like, I die in that movie. Like Robert Downey Jr.'s character oh. is like, why they killed me off in this movie, and he's all upset and everything. <laughs> you know, and it'd be awesome if they, and, you know, Brett Easton Ellis was like, we should get all those guys back now and do the movie, even though Robert Downey Jr. dies in it in the original. Are they gonna make a, Are they gonna make the sequel? No, no plans to re remake Less Than Zero or make a sequel. No, Tarantino wanted to do Less Than yeah, Zero. Yeah, I heard of that, and he wanted to do uh, Casino Royale too, but. And that was the only James Bond movie that he wanted to do. I think that was just at the moment kind of thing, but I think Less Than Zero was something he'd wanted to do before, like Reservoir Dogs. Like, I think that was just something that was on his list. Oh, okay. Um, he'd wanted to do Friday the 13th, too, or that was they were talking about that when that was getting remade. That could be Tarantino doing a Friday the 13th movie? Holy shit. You know, but he's one of those guys that's got a million projects on his fucking plate. Or just can't well, I think it's less so now. Now I think he's kind of, now that he's getting older, he's kind of well, and he says narrowing he's, he's, his projects well, down. Yeah, and he's going to retire here soon. Is he? Cause he's, he says he doesn't want to, he wants his his filmography to be perfect. Right, so he, he doesn't said, want any duds in there. He said like four or five more movies, which is probably perfect anyway. Yeah. I mean, as long as it now. takes, yeah, as long as it takes for him to make a movie, four or five is probably all he's got. But I was actually pretty impressed because he fucking made Inglorious Bastards, and then two years later came Django and Chain, which is probably the quick shit. It usually takes like four or five, six years before you see another movie from him. Cause it, well, like it was Death Proof and then Inglorious Bastards, mm -hmm. and Death Proof was two thousand and six. Mm -hmm. That was like April fifth, two thousand and six. Yeah. Or was that that was oh seven? Was it oh seven? That was oh seven. Sure. Yeah, that was 07, dude. Because I was at JCPenney's. Melissa was at JCPenney's. Um, because 06, the big movie in April was... I don't remember what it was, but like we had seen like Superman was the big movie that year. Oh, yeah. Uh, Superman came out. Uh, Pirates of the Caribbean was the big one, too. The sequel yeah. to that. Both yeah, of them, Dead I think. Man's chest. What? Yeah, that, that was, was a big one. summer. Fuck, dude. Every time summer comes around, I think about like summer '05, summer '06. Those rejects. Oh, you know what? Do you remember reading the script and I put that line in that I think Jones says it? What? Uh, he's like, I got something for you. Yeah. Oh, I got something for because you. Because that's what I said to you when I walked in yeah. the Devil's Rejects. I got something for And you had this idea in your mind of what it was going to be, and then you were kind of disappointed when yeah, we well, saw no, the movie. Yeah, well, no, because the way you described it was... I saw him walking. Out. I saw him walking. She well, was on the what ground. I thought, what I thought was happening is, like, he had a two-by-four, because you said he had a two-by-four and shit, and I thought, like, she was bound in a car in my head. This is what I was seeing. Bound in a car. He fucking grabs her out, fucking throws her ass <laughs> on the ground, has his two-by-fours, like... I got something for you. What does he have? His belt? Yeah, he has like not a belt, like the thing, like for cows or whipping. Oh, like yeah, he's got like a whip. Yeah, a whip or something. I got something for you. <laughs> he's fucking whipping her, and you, <laughs> you were like, I thought it was gonna be something else. Yeah, I thought it was gonna be a little, little dude, it's so badass. So I threw that into the movie for you. Yeah, hell yeah. Nice little reference back to you. Got something for you. I got something for you. <laughs> I got something for you. Yeah, dude. But it's still badass. I'm waiting for the three cool, the third one. To the come third out. one, the Devil's Rejects. Yeah, fuck yeah. You could just say that fucking Super Beast though was the third one. Yeah. Isn't Otis in that? I don't know. I think Otis is in that. Michael Myers is in that. That was Summer '05, right? Or was that? Yeah, no, that yeah, was that Summer '05. 05. That was the big summer. That was the summer that started it all, and now it's all turned to shit. <laughs> well, this is another big summer right here. This is gonna be a huge summer. I mean, we're but the thing movie, about like badass movies coming Patriot out. Zombie was a big summer too because we were fucking partying every week. I don't know. Most well, of I mean, time. we were filming, but like it seemed like people were just partying every week <laughs> instead of filming. Yeah, partying instead of filming. We spent the first five hours drinking, and then <laughs> and then we the spent last one, hour, last one hour o'clock in the morning, yeah, we'd be filming. <laughs> everybody's already drunk. 
Oh, man. This is gonna and be And that great keeps saying, you remember me you know, during pictures of the... No. No, you no don't. You don't remember much, you know? <laughs> You're fucking running from the gym and you go yeah. trip and fall. No, you're gonna fucking help me out with the fuck. <laughs> I didn't even know you fucking ran and tripped and fell. Yeah, I think I was like fucking with Greg and then he stopped and I kept running and fell. Yeah, yeah, Greg was just fucking along with you but you were actually just fucked up. <laughs> that was just you. Yeah, it was just me being me. <laughs> you know it would be sick this summer if we could get all these like cast members to go to at least one or two movies as a huge group. Yeah, that'd be nice. What do we got? Superman? Yeah, like Superman, I guess. Superman. <laughs> Star Trek's, you know, in a week. Nah, uh, probably. So, I've got in June 14th, Superman. June 28th, that's the heat. July 12th is Pacific Rim. And Wolverine is July 26th. <laughs> oh, God for Gears is the... 19th. That's the one you want to do? Well, that's the one. Well, I'm going to definitely be seeing that few because I told my sister I'd be taking her and she's a huge Ryan Gosling fan. Uh, I showed her All the trailer. I, I showed her the trailer for it. She's like, he's not going to die in the first 20 minutes, is he? Why does she say that? Because he dies in the first, like, well, it's more like 40 minutes. Uh, beyond the Pines? Place beyond the, but to her, it's probably like 20 minutes because it seemed like so, so quick. So she's like, he can we go home now? Yeah, she was like, wait, what? <laughs> Yep. She's like, this This happens in movies? <laughs> well, and then Characters I, die at well, the beginning? I was like, hey, listen, okay, yeah, he's gone, but you got you got Bradley Cooper now for, for the rest of the movie. So. She's not as, no, she, poor man's Ryan Gosling as Bradley yeah, Cooper. Every girl fucking is in love with Ryan Gosling. I know, I know. Oh, People yeah. are, they go and see Drive, and these chicks are like, that's yeah, kind of weird. Yeah. It's like, fuck you. You don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> that was a weird movie, Drive. <laughs> it's really yeah, not. And, you know, I bet it's probably the point where she fucking, like, the, the scene where in the motel and shit just starts getting really fucking violent and heads are exploding and then he stomps in the guy's head. I bet that's the shit that turns off women that are just going to see him Yeah. and don't really care what the movie's well, about. I remember when I was watching it with my ex, when that scene where he's crushing the dude's head in the elevator, she just looks at me like, what the f you know, it's like, fucking bad. <laughs> this is Ryan Gosling at his best. He's like the new Charles Bronson, Steve McQueen type badass dude. Steve McQueen isn't that badass. What are you talking about? He's a badass. You seen Bullet? <laughs> barely, I uh, barely Bullet. seen Bullet. Bullet's been on in, in the background. Great, Great Escape, badass in that. What else? He's like fucking Charles Bronson in the Great Escape. Great Escape. He's digging tunnels. He's digging tunnels. Dick, 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 dick. <laughs> well, I want to see Great Escape. I haven't seen it. You've that. never seen Great Escape? Uh, I want to see it though. Who directed that? Oh, yeah. Walter Hill? Yeah. There's a hell of people in that movie. Yeah, James Coburn's in it, right? James Co Charles Bronson's in it, but he's barely in yeah, it. Yeah, this is when he was starting to. Is he credited as Bronson in that movie? I think so. Because I've got House of Wax, which is like his first movie. And he's just credited as Bronson? No, it's uh, Charles Baczynski, something like that. His so he changed first his name, name huh? Yeah. Just like Bronson did. Yeah. Or what was his name in the movie? Uh, Michael. Michael Keaton or something. Michael Pipsky. I can't remember. Michael. <laughs> Michael. Who's Brian? Who's Brian? He's <laughs> <laughs> so funny in that. Man, I want to see him do another role like that. Like, come on, he's doing the all sequel this... sequel to Bronson? Doing all these stupid... Uh, well, it's just like he's just... He's kind of doing stupid movies. I mean, you got Mad Max. Yeah. Hopefully they don't fuck that up. Hopefully not. I mean, he looks all haggard and shit. Yeah. And they're doing all kinds of cool fucking cars and shit. I haven't been looking Hopefully at them. Hopefully it's R. Why wouldn't it be? Well, I guess the last one was like PG, right? The PG Tina Turner. 13, but knowing them, they wanted PG-13 so it'd be a wider audience can go to it. Which sucks, because that's not what it's truly about. It's truly about the artwork. The artwork, <laughs> not whether fucking kids can go Making see it or the movie not. How don't you give want a shit be. really about it. They just forget about the movie five minutes after it's over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, come on. <laughs> Who are you really making movies for here for? What were you telling me? Uh, your buddy didn't like uh, uh, the DiCaprio movie, I Inception. Yeah, who did I say didn't like that shit? 
Oh uh, yeah, just a buddy, of my, a buddy of mine said he didn't like it. He's yeah. more into the Fast and Furious Transformers type movies, where you don't gotta think about it. Yeah, I fucking hate the Transformers movies. I didn't even see the third one. The fourth one's coming out, the third one's oh, dude. Did you see it? Yeah, well, I saw it, well, I, the only reason I watched it is because I swore I was living with my buddy and I was unemployed like a year and a half ago, and he had it. Okay. I had nothing to do all day but watch movies and play video games. So on Netflix. Pop that shit on. <laughs> What dark worst. of the moon. The dark of the moon. So stupid. You throw it out the window like fucking Bradley Cooper in yeah. Silver Lines Play. What the fuck? <laughs> I don't give a fuck who cares. I don't give a fuck who's listening. I want to watch my video. Where the fuck is my video? See, that's two different scenes in the book. Because <laughs> what he's doing in the book is he's uh, sleeping in the attic because it's hot. Yeah. And he zips himself up into a sleeping bag so he can just sweat all night long. Yeah, because he's trying to lose weight for his wife. Right? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, like, Kenny G, like, he sings that song. I don't know if it's that song in the movie. Um, but, like, Kenny G sings a song. And, like, he starts hallucinating. Kenny G's there fucking talking to him and shit. And he starts freaking out. And his mom comes in. And he accidentally knocks her back. And then his dad comes in and beats him up. Ugh. And then there's also the scene where he's looking for the video. And he just... I think you're trying Calm to down. hide my wedding video from me. <laughs> In the book, he comes home and he's like, where are all the pictures of me and Nikki? And she's like, oh, someone come and stole some stuff. And he's like, they stole our photos together? Why would they? Oh, they were in like really nice frames. You know, they stole the frames. The pictures just happened to be in them and shit. <laughs> yeah, my dad still hasn't watched it. I let him borrow it. You let him borrow Tenacious D? He's, got a, he's doing a band thing now? He's been in a band for a while now. He's like uh, a fifties doo wop group. No, man, they sing fucking. <laughs> Damn, they're pretty good too. Uh, Is it just covers. Yeah, like Stones, fucking Beatles, fucking Pre Elvis. Pre what does he do? He's a bass guitar. Okay. And singer. And the other guy, one guy sings along with him and plays regular Back guitar. Backup singer. And then there's a guy on the drums. So there's just three people. I think there's just three like people. Rush. Do they yeah. sing any Rush tunes? Probably, dude. You should see the room he's got set up where I used to sleep in. That's now Upstairs? the music room. Yeah. Fucking looks badass. He's got badass It's fucking... a tiny room, though. Oh, he fucking fixed it up nice, though. So... Did he tear out he's... a wall? No, he's <laughs> just got all his shit. Room. He just got all his shit set up. Well, when there's no bed and there's no dresser and there's no fucking desk and shit in there and he's just got these thin tables with his music mm -hmm. and then that shit tons of CDs and he's got like a Blues Brothers poster up on the wall and shit, he's got all kinds of fucking Have pictures. you talked to him about filming at the house? Oh no, I forgot. Have you talked to him about the movie at all? Yeah. Did you tell him about the Kickstarter? Yeah. You, let's get the band together and raise some fucking money. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I wish it was that easy. Just Ooh. give us ten bucks. And then tell him to give us ten bucks. Tell him to give us ten bucks. Tell, tell, them. tell two friends. Tell two friends. And have those two friends tell two friends. It's all right. White people do it to other white people all the time. It's what makes the world go round. What is that? <laughs> From the fighter. Oh, it's just, I only saw Where, it one time. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. When we went and saw. Well, him, when so. he's trying to fucking scam those uh, uh, Cambodian people, so he can get money to to train his brother right, instead right. of having him go to Vegas or whatever. And he's like, yeah, you, see, you get a friend, you find a friend, you get $10, <laughs> and then they find a friend, and we just need 10 of you. Oh, you think Cambodian people are stupid? No, no, white people do this to other white people all the time. It's what makes the world go round. <laughs> that, uh, Christian Bale? No, that's his buddy. With okay. The, with the crack. You haven't only seen that movie once? Yeah, I only saw it oh, once. Oh, dude, I've must have seen it over 100 times now. You know, I... I those kinds of movies are awesome, but I really, I only have the stomach to watch them once. I hate watching depressing things. It's not depressing, it's uplifting, especially at the end. It's a pretty uplifting movie. Yeah, he but, wins like, the fight, but you watch all the, like, all the family the shit and everything like that. Well, it's I know, like, his family's fucking horrible. It's hard for me to watch movies like that, because that's kind of like a family that I grew up with. Like, I was lucky enough to, um... Is that great? I don't know, is that a knock? No. It's the next door. You know, I was lucky enough to like grow up with my great grandparents and everything. I didn't have to deal with that. But whenever I would go and visit like my mom and shit, her and my aunt were always fucking fighting and throwing beer bottles at each other and shit. <laughs> so I, and you know, they kind of, you know, my mom kicked around with, you know, my brother and sister and you know, motels and shit oh, yeah. across the country, like Tennessee, Utah, California, here. So like, I hate watching shit like that because it just kind of brings me back. Shit, you write what you know. I know. You know, I know. what I've noticed about everything I've, I've written 
is there's always uh, the one of the main themes is family issues. There's always like fam like dysfunctional family members. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it. I <laughs> it's kind of the thing about what I write. They're always family members fighting or something's always wrong. Right, right, right. But that's part of life. That is part of life. Which is why I don't like watching movies like that. Like, did you ever see one movie I don't like at all? Is uh, I think it's Anywhere But Here. Natalie Portman. I think it's, I think it's Natalie Portman and I want to say Susan Sarandon, but I'm probably wrong. And like Natalie Portman and like her mom, like it's her and her mom, and they're just like they're doing the motel thing from like motel to motel. I think, or maybe they're just in one. I don't really remember. But then she goes off and gets older and becomes successful and kind of. I think that's how it ends. I don't know, but it's it's a it's, like just, it's just a depressing regular, just a regular drama movie. You know, it's no Leon the Professional. Leon, right? And I barely remember that movie too. I want to watch it again. Gary Oldman stills the show. And is he a bad guy in that, yeah, or is he just that, a dick cop? No, he's just that corrupt uh, DEA agent. He's like cheese. And he's, he's listening to music, right? And he's fucking swinging he's his arm. Listening to Beethoven. That's what he's doing. He's doing. He's con uh, conducting when he's going through the hall. Uh, <laughs> and what? Well, he's away in the. Uh, Luc Besson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fifth Element. Fifth Element to Luc Besson. Fifth Element. He hasn't really directed anything. He just produces those Taken movies. Lockout. And The Transport. He didn't direct that. He fucking produced it. That's it? it. He, yeah, he hasn't directed didn't he, it. Uh, didn't he write it? He might have helped write it. Or the story by Credit. I want to see him do another badass movie. Like Leon? Like Leon or Is there a sequel Fifth to Leon? Element? No. Should he do a sequel? Well, Does he die? Nikita, not Nikita. La Femme Nikita. La Femme Nikita is like a prequel to is it? Leon, kind of, he says, but I haven't seen it, so I don't know for yeah. sure. Yeah, that's one of those movies that people talk about, like they went and made a TV show about it. La Femme Nikita? Yeah, I remember that being on USA in the early 90s, Yeah. like all the time, and I thought it was kind of like a, an adult kind of thing. Yeah. Like, not like a porn, but it just seemed like that would be something I wouldn't be allowed to watch. <laughs> but I guess it's just like a spy movie or a... Yeah, it's supposed to be just like a... Hitman chick she's movie. She's like an assassin or some shit. Yeah, yeah, um, but that's one that I want to see now, La Femme Nikita. If you can find it. I think they put it out recently on Blu-ray or something. You know, it sucks, it's like I go to work tonight. I know, that I does hate, suck. I hate work, but it, you know, next weekend will be a three-day weekend. Oh, yeah. Smack that right in the middle of the read-through. Yeah. So my weekend will probably go by slow and then fast yeah. and then I'll just be over and then I'll be back to fucking work again yeah. on to the next three day week I try not to think about that uh, yeah, no, it's... Work. <laughs> and I I think I'm going to miss my high school reunion my 10 year high school reunion because I'll be working it's at like 6.30pm when's that? at North Valley's? yeah <laughs> you should totally go I'll be working who gives a fuck fucking hey I got my high school reunion to go to yeah, well you know if my money situation was okay I could do that oh, but fuck. I gotta pay the bills so Dude, I wonder who's gonna be there and what they're gonna be up to. You don't know Ten any of those years? people. Come on, it's all over Facebook what everybody's doing. <laughs> you know, I'm pretty much friends with everybody I went to high school with aside yeah. from the assholes. So it's not <laughs> like I'm so curious about. Uh, I would love to go though, but like my mindset right now, I just. I don't feel like going and seeing people. La Femme Nikita. I could watch it on Amazon. Here it is, 15 bucks. Blu-ray. Little man, put that shit in my hand. James on Bob. Yeah, see, here's that TV show. Though I just thought it was like a dirty TV show because it's like a chick doing like sexy things. Yeah. Um. Let's see what it's about, Patrick. Uh. Did you see the Mike wrote on Facebook said he won't be able to get here till four or five from the script reading? Really? That's what it says right here. I won't be able to get there until four or five. Mike Robinson? So yeah, I'll, I'll look right here. It's uh, one of those main posts or something. Wall posts. Wall posts. Yeah, here I see. I got one thing here. What's this, Greg? Perfect day in the park. Jeff Klein. That's his brother. See, he's someone that I went to school with the same age as me. Uh, well, shit. Um, let me see here. Just 
All right, four or five. I guess that'll make it easier for Sarah to show up. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Uh, let me ch fucking change this then. I think Greg wants to leave or has to leave at like six. So, in order to, well, I'll do this after we're done talking. We'll talk for another 15 minutes or so. Yeah. Uh, so where did we leave off? Luc Besson? Luc Besson, the Leon family the professional. Kita. Yeah. How does he say that that's like a prequel to it? Yeah, I just heard that. That's what I heard. Right, well, I've I got think it. he says it on the professional uh, like. extra features. Oh, I got it brought up here, or I did, um, and it looks like it's about, god damn it, uh, from director Luc Besson comes this wild and irresistible thriller about a vicious street punk turned sexy, sophisticated, and legally dangerous assassin, uh, Jean Renault's in it, uh, rescued from death row by a top secret agency, Nikita is slowly transformed from a cop killing junkie into a cold-blooded bombshell with a license to kill. Maybe Jean Reno plays the same character he plays in The Professional. Maybe. Remember in Professional, he had come over from Italy. So I don't know. Uh, but when she begins the deadliest mission of her s career, only to fall for a man who knows nothing of her true identity, Nikita discovers that in the dark and ruthless world of espionage, the greatest casualty of all is true love. Uh, Can I see that? What's the poster look like that for that movie? It's got her on it. It's like the same poster I always see. It's just kind of her leaned against the wall, sitting down with a gun. Like she's ready to turn the corner or something. Let's see if the reviews say anything here. Uh, I think they're remaking this, actually. Or they did remake it. Point of No Return with Bridget Fonda is... Oh, I have Point of No Return. That's the remake of La Femme Nikita. Is there a character in there, like the professional? Like, mm, like Leon? Well, there's a character in it named the Wolf. <laughs> and it's played by Harvey Keitel. Oh, shit. I think that's what it is. The Wolf, yeah. They call you know, I think Clockers was on the other day on HBO. I've never seen that movie, but like... <laughs> You're just a junkyard nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what he says? That's what he says. In a Spike Lee movie? Yeah. Oh, he says no. He was talking to Omar. Is Omar Epps in that movie? Uh -huh. Yeah, that was probably, he was talking to him. He was like, when was the last time you saw your brother? Well, a day, a week, month, a year? Yeah. He's like, yeah, yeah. Well, which one? <laughs> a couple months. It's been a couple months. Yes, yeah, my stomach's hurt. So that was, that's Flockers then? Yeah. yeah. okay. I thought it was because it, it just, I couldn't see it being anything else. Yeah, some of the best scenes in that movie are with fucking... Uh, Fuck, I can never remember his name, but he's like the, the head, he's like the big boss, the gangster in that movie. He's also, he's, Danny do Ayala? not eat my sesame seed. Oh, okay. uh. That guy. Del, Del Roy, Del Roy Lindo. Del Roy Lindo. He, he's, he probably steals the show from everybody in that movie, all his scenes he's in. He's a mob, uh, like a gangster? He's like the head gangster who Gang runs a shop, leader. who sells crack to all these people. And there's this huge uh, montage. Like a five minute montage of all these guys, their jobs, sitting on the benches selling crack and the fucking nasty look at people going off and smoking crack and shit. It's pretty, pretty powerful scene actually. It's like, damn, you don't, don't smoke that. What are you He's doing? in fucking everything. Yeah. And I always love seeing him show up in movies. Did you see, you've seen fucking Devil's Advocate? Yeah. Or he's the fucking voodoo guy. Oh, yeah. That's right, he is in that. And then he's in The One. Did you see The One? With Jet Li. And Jason Statham. Yeah. He's the cop in that movie. Uh, Congo. Congo. It's probably the first one I remember. Uh, I can't think of what else he's in. You know who's in fucking Congo? Joey Pants. Yeah, Joey Pants, who hasn't been in anything in a while. Oh, uh, is he like directing stuff? Or? I don't know, I think he's probably just kind of... Now, what, what was he in? He played, he was in Percy Jackson. He was in Percy Jackson. And The Lightning Thief. Which... You did, did you see it? No. It's okay. It's okay. It's not that bad. I 
the Lightning Thief. It's just, I mean, it's like, it's a, you know, it's for young adults, like the book was. You know. Hmm. In the vein of Hunger Games and Twilight and Harry Potter. It's, <laughs> you know, you group all those movies together and you could just sit down with your kids and watch them after school. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, one day when I have kids, I'll do that and I'll enjoy those movies. <laughs> What about Hunger, you're like, you're like Hunger Games? Hunger Games. Running Man! Running Man! Well, even still, like, I just show my little sisters, like, real movies. I don't fuck around with none of the bullshit. I'm gonna gonna everything that's coming out now, the bullshit fucking kids' movies, you can be like, no, this movie came out 10, 20 years ago that's even better than that. It's the same fucking story. Right? Clash of the Titans. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Lawrence Olivier. Lawrence of Olivia. Lawrence of a Lady. I watched that. That's what I was sleeping to yesterday. It was Zach and Mary. Who are you? What's Lawrence of a Lady? Is that Zach and Mary? Well, Mary? Lord, yeah, Lawrence of a Lady. Lawrence of a Lady. Where they're going through the names of movies. Yeah. yeah, I just had that on constant loop. And I'll wake up and I'll hit play again if it's off. Or I'll watch a couple minutes of it and try and fall back to sleep. Yeah, yeah, I do the same thing, kind of. Um, it's just so hard for me to sleep during the day. I might go fucking get some Night Quill. <laughs> and pop a couple night quills when I get home and eat and then fall asleep. Wow. And it'll keep me healthy too, so I won't going. get cold. Maybe you just need to do a few rails. <laughs> no, I want to sleep, not wake up. Oh yeah. Well maybe you just better not go to sleep ever again. <laughs> I'll start I'll be like fucking uh dude in Jacob's ladder. It's I'll start so seeing lizards and shit. That's Robin Williams, right? Tim Robbins. Tim Robbins. What are you thinking of Jacob's Ladder? Jacob's Liar. Jacob the Liar is what I'm thinking. Jacob the Liar? Yeah. I don't know what that is. That's a... Kingfisher? Kingfisher. With uh, I Jeff think Bridges. that's a movie about the Jews and Robin Williams. Moscow on the Hudson? <laughs> <laughs> Another movie I haven't seen. Moscow on the Hudson? Yeah. Isn't he a Russian dude in that? I'm not sure. I hear Moscow, and I think it's a Russian movie. So many movies out there that I haven't seen. So many that I want to see. It sucks. You only watch so many movies, Patrick. I've seen, I think, everything that I really want to see. There's still, a ton, like, I've got all these movies that I bought that I want to see. Why don't you watch them every day? One every day. It's just a schedule. And, like, I'm really into, you know, we were doing the movie. I, I can start. Did you, you watch know. The Getaway to get you in the mood? I haven't watched shit yet. That you let me borrow. This uh, this upcoming week, I'm gonna start trying to get a movie in every day, so so that I can start watching the shit. I'm gonna watch the Oliver Stone thing last because I, I probably want to watch Platoon and Born and the other one. Mm -hmm. So watch Salvador. That way, I can start giving you some stuff back instead of just watching that and fucking taking forever with one thing. John Belushi's in Salvador. What is that? That's one of the movies. Well, I know, I know that, but like that just uh, these. Uh, well, John Belushi's in it. Or not James Belushi. James, Jim Belushi. And Jim Belushi, and but uh, uh, James Woods plays this investigative reporter journalist who goes to Cuba. Or who something? has like a what? It, what his habit? He has a habit in going to all these different places in the world and having like a kid with a woman and marrying and then leaving and going somewhere else and having a kid. Sounds like Fight Club. That scene that uh, that story that he tells when he's in the bathtub. Oh. About his dad or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, what he did, because he, he ends up leaving, okay, I'll be back, and goes and reports on something else in a different country, fucks a different, kind of falls in love with a different girl or whatever. And so it starts off with him back. in San Francisco, and he doesn't have any money to pay the rent, and he's with this Russian girl, and he has, like, a couple kids, and he's, like, <laughs> totally neglecting his kids, you know, he's all right, you know. So she leaves him, he goes and picks up uh, his buddy, uh, who's played by Jim Belushi okay. or no what happens is he goes to jail he goes to jail and then Jim Belushi bails him out and then they have to go get Jim Belushi's dog who's at the pound but they put the dog down so he asks him if he, want, if he wants to go to Salvador, El Salvador with him to go do this story it's back when the revolution was going on okay. in El Salvador so they go on this road trip down there and <laughs> Jim Belushi and, and is pretty much from that point on he's drunk for the entire movie that sounds like such a weird fucking movie, dude. Well, they go down there, and they go and they party, and he he, he uh, ends up meeting up with the girl who he has a kid with, and when he was down there before, mm -hmm. this Mexican girl, and 
and it's all about them trying to get out of Salvador and report on this story. And Jim's, Jim Belushi's just in the middle of the whole thing. He just wants to get the fuck out of there. And he's just complaining the whole time. I sound like, is drunk. it funny or is it? It's, there's funny, it's funny, but it's also very serious. It's and it's like kind a of, drama, but it's got funny shit. There's some dirt, disturbing shit in it, too. That's weird. I'll probably I'll watch that, I guess. I yeah, that's I like pretty Jim good. Woods. Jim Belushi does it. It's just hella funny. He's like the comedic value of the whole movie because you're watching this thing and you're like, fuck, man, this movie's pretty fucked up. And then Jim Belushi comes in and he's like, fuck, man, fuck, I just want to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Did you ever end up seeing that Michael Mann movie with him that you wanted to see? Was it Thief? Yeah, no, I didn't. You never ended up seeing that? James Caan. I guess. James Caan's in that too. Never mm. saw it. No. One day. To, I saw the clip where he got blown away with uh, a shotgun yeah, yeah, yeah. and he had the his hands tied behind his back and shit. And that was actually him. He was talking about, I remember because the interview, he was talking about how he had to do that and his hands were really fucking zip tied behind his back when he fell from the shotgun blast on his fucking arms and shit oh, so it hurt shit. hella bad. <laughs> but yeah, I want to see that. <laughs> see, there's still plenty of movies out there that you want to see. I mean, I'm looking at some over here. Well, I've seen everything that I know that I want to see unless I come across, oh yeah, you want to see that shit? The Man Who Wasn't There. Man Who Wasn't There. Have seen, you seen that? Yeah. Is it good? Yeah. Uh, of course it's good. Uh, the Jackal. The uh, remake? Jack Black, yeah. Um, What's the original called? The Day of the Jackal. The Day of the Jackal. Yeah. Because I was thinking Three Days of the Condor. You know, my dad loves The Day of the Jackal, hates the remake. Really? Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Well, I guess he doesn't hate it, but he prefers... The Day of the Jackal is like a British movie, isn't it? Yeah. Have you seen it? I've seen parts of it because my dad was watching it one time. Is there the scene where he blows the guy, Jack Black, get his arm blown off? Mm, it's a much lighter version. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was in my uh, Horror Hound magazine. That was considered one of the best gory scenes in a non-horror film. I remember when I first saw it, I was like, holy shit! I think was the whole, that was the first arm I've ever seen blown off in, in movies. <laughs> it's fucking Jack Black. Yeah, and it's Comedian Jack, Jack Black. It's Jack, that's why I knew Jack Black before I ever known him as like the real comedian Jack Black was mm. the guy from fucking Enemy of the State and the guy from fucking The Jackal. Cable Guy. And Cable Guy. Whereas the buddy and he's like, what he's are you a, doing, he's man? He's kind of a dick. He fucking steps on his back to, to, to dunk the uh, Jim Carrey oh, step on yeah. his back. And he's like, oh, what the fuck? Hey, but he's not even very funny in that movie at all. No, no. Doesn't he Doesn't he look into... Yeah, Chip Douglas. Yeah, he's like, Chip Douglas. Do you have that movie? No. Fuck. Chip Douglas, my three sons. That's not his real name. <laughs> yeah, that movie's hilarious. And Owen Wilson's in that. And yeah, he gets his ass beats his ass in the bathroom because he's going out with his girlfriend. Or his girlfriend. Who's the chick in that? It's the it's Judd Apatow's wife. Oh, uh, Leslie Mann. Yeah. Leslie Mann's the chick in that. And he's like, "Sleepless in Seattle's on this weekend. Just tell her, you know, you got cable. It's going to pop in. Sleepless in Seattle. Every girl loves Every sleep. girl. <laughs> sleepless in Seattle. Oh, I love that movie. You know." Uh, I have a buddy, my, my brother's a speech therapist, so, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I could probably get you to, get him to get you a tape or something. That's a Ben Stiller movie. Yeah. He's, he's, uh, the dude at the trial on TV. I saw a guy running away. This Asian I think guy. he was Asian. He looked Asian. <laughs> he must have been Asian. I'm pretty sure he was Asian. <laughs> I think that was a uh, a reference to the Menendez brothers trial. Yeah. Did you ever see? Did yeah. you ever know who those guys? The guys were? who killed their parents. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was very similar to that. And he's just fucking sitting there in court with his glasses on, listening to the the tape <laughs> playback. <laughs> I love Ben Stiller movies. He does all the dark comedies. Him and Danny DeVito. Yeah. Like, did Danny DeVito do Duplex? Yeah, he directed Duplex. Yep. You know, I think that movie's underrated. I think that movie was pretty funny. Like, because at the time that I watched it, I was big into writing. And he's a writer in that movie trying to get shit done. And, yeah. like, the scene where he's got the laptop, like, what, like he loses it in the street or it goes out the window into the street and oh, it gets ran over. Me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's cringed. exactly how I was. I cringe. Or he's got the book and she wants him to sign and he's like, oh! Yeah. And it's, it was like 10 cents in the bargain, <laughs> yeah. bargain book. And he's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess yeah. uh, let's wrap this up then. Yeah. Uh, it's been fun. We got the movie coming out. Uh, we talked about movies and... This won't be the last time you hear from us. Yeah, hopefully every week, uh, if we keep meeting like this, uh, 
we can keep doing these. I got a couple other subjects I want to tackle in the yeah, future, yeah. so Hell yeah. uh, we'll keep updating on the movie. We'll keep talking about movies, and hopefully, as the movie comes out, people will start listening to these fucking things. They're fucking better. Uh, so, Patrick. Uh, I guess I'm Matthew Bonta. And I'm Patrick Rogensberger. Uh, stay classy, Reno.